Hey y'all, I've been watching some of these uh, videos about uh, Christians being persecuted and stuff and also uh, evangelicals and uh, Israel and uh, the Zionists and all that. They call them, but uh, what I see is in most of these, everybody's pointing their finger like it's your fault, it's your fault, blaming each other. Well, uh, it's not. You can leave your comments and uh, discussion on this if you want to. Uh, it's uh, it's not the evangelicals' fault. It's not the Christians' fault. It's not the Zionists' fault. It's not Israel's fault. It's not the Jews' fault. The Jewish people's fault. It's not the Palestinians' fault. It's not anybody's fault. No nation's fault. It's not the devil's fault. It's the people. I mean, think about it. When God was looking down from heaven upon the earth before the days of the flood there with Noah, what did he say he saw? It grieved his heart that he had made man upon the face of the earth. Why? Because the hearts of men were only wickedness and evil, to do wickedness and evil. All the time, that's what they wanted to do. It was the people, the heart. It's always been a matter of the heart. And that's why in the new covenant, he said uh, he wants to give us a new heart wherein dwells righteousness and take the stony heart away and put in a heart of flesh. And he wants to write his, his laws in our mind and put them in our hearts. That's the new covenant. He wants to regenerate his spirit within us just like it was in the beginning of the creation. So it's none of those people's fault we need to stop blaming each other. That causes wars. Leads to strife and more ungodliness. We need to realize the fault is our heart and turn our hearts to Him. Because He said in the days of the flood that uh, it was on the heart of some men were only evil constantly all the time wanting to do evil. And so it repented God's heart that he had made man upon the earth. He said, their days shall be 120. I, my spirit will not always strive with them. Noah preached to the people for 120 years, and they still refused to repent and turn and walk in love and in obedience to God's ordinances and his instructions. He only wants us to walk in love. And it's like that. And so what happened? He sent the flood upon the earth. And uh, archeology span proves that stuff too. How do all them uh, clam shells and stuff get on the tops of those mountains? And uh, those fish up there and those stones and all that kind of stuff on the tops of mountains. They didn't get up, walk up there. The flood is how they got up there on the tops of those high mountains. But anyway, God sent the flood and destroyed them all. And uh, we can't say it was the devil's fault neither because if that were the case, then God as wise as he is, he made the heavens and the earth then why wouldn't have he destroyed the devil at that time? 
Because it wasn't the devil's fault. It's the people's fault. What is the devil? He's like an arresting police officer. How do we know? The parables of Yahushua, the parables of Yahshua, Jesus. He told us that kings and prophets have longed to hear the words that those disciples that studied with him had heard. And they had not heard it, but he explained unto them. He said, uh, in one of his parables, he said that, uh, that he forgave this man a great debt and because uh, he couldn't pay it. And that's our sin. We can't pay the debt of our own sin, but he paid it for us and he forgave us. And <clears throat> but anyway, he forgave this man this great debt. The man went out and held a little bitty debt against uh, a fellow neighbor of his and uh, then the kings heard about it and because his family was, was complaining to the king about him mistreating this man after he had been forgiven, the king called him back in and asked him, he said, I, I forgave you that great debt and you went out and you held this against this other person for such a little small thing that happened and uh he said send the tormentors take him away and uh he'll be cast in to prison until he pay the far greatest price and he said he explained that parable when he said and this shall my heavenly Father, Yehovah, the Father, Yehovah of the Son, Yehoshua, God our Savior. He said, this is what my Father in heaven shall do unto each of you. If you from your hearts forgive not one another their trespasses. And he said, my Father in heaven cannot forgive you your trespasses. You do not forgive each other. So, who are the tormentors? It's just like it's written in, in the scriptures that uh, that when the Lord comes in to the earth, and he has, that uh, God requires all people to submit unto the words that he speaks unto them. And uh, if they don't, then God requires it of them. And uh, so what happens when a person tries to, when they hear the truth and they try to run from it? The pit and the snare is upon the earth, it says in the prophets. And those who run with fear from the word of truth, they fall into the pit and they're taken in the snare. And that's why the scripture says also, I believe it's in the book of Timothy, that he says that, uh, that those who fell into the pit, when they try to come up and get out, they're taken in the snare. Well, uh, he said he wants us to repent so that we are not taken in the snare. Who is the one that takes them in the snare? It's the devil, like an arresting police officer. And he casts them into a prison in their own hearts and their minds. And the word sorrow translates as anger. And so their hearts become angry toward the authority of Almighty God. So if it was the devil's fault, then he would have destroyed the devil when that flood was sent upon the earth. But it wasn't. It was the hearts of men 
that refuse to repent and submit to the authority of God. And so that's the case. That's what needs to be done. We need to surrender our lives unto our Creator, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. He gave Ten Commandments. And they're not grievous. They're all ordained out of the loving character of our Heavenly Father, the Father of all spirits. And that's all He wants, us to come unto Him. He's there with open arms saying, Come unto me, my child, and I'll fix your heart and give you a new heart wherein dwelleth love and peace and joy and righteousness in every situation hallelujah he will be with us so let us surrender unto god he's drawing us all to the love of his beloved son for he so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life peace be with y'all i just want to share that thought with you So, let's keep praying for each other. Y'all are in my prayers. Keep me in yours. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think about all this. Peace be with you. I love y'all. Shalom.